This video gives a walkthrough of the quality function deployment process as applied to a relatively simple design of a water filter. And specifically, we'll look at how to fill out the house of quality table based on data you've already collected. Just as a quick reminder, the QFD process is focusing on helping you answer the questions, who are your customers, what are their needs, how well are they currently satisfied, how will you determine if their needs are met, and how much is good enough performance on each of those criteria. You want to analyze your answers at each step and then capture all of those results in the house of quality. And as a reminder, here's what the QFD house of quality looks like. Now in this video, I'll be going through the process of filling out uh, these cells by walking through the process. Most of what's in the QFD is coming out of the research that you've already been performing to pull together your design. So for instance, the who and what their criteria are, so the who versus what, is coming from your customer research and your needs research. The how are you going to assess things is going to partly come out of your technical research. What th sort of uh, tests can you perform? The current performance now and now versus what is coming from product research, uh, specifically benchmarking current performance of products. And then the output of your QFD, what you're getting out of this process, are some specific engineering specification targets. How are you going to test and then what the target value is that you're looking for. So let's begin with a specific example. Consider a backpacker's need for clean water. We want to answer these questions, the who, what, what's going on now, how, and how much. For the first step, defining who your customers are, we're going to be filling this in in the House of Quality upper left corner. I'll show you that now. So you want to enter your customers into the upper left corner in the template that we have. Uh, it's listed initially customer one, two, and three. So for example, make sure that you capture your main customer and perhaps a few secondary customers. And um, don't, don't forget, of course, to enter the uh, name of the project that you're working on here so that it's clear once you do print this as well as a revision date. And um, one thing to make sure you don't forget with your customers it are the, the people who are producing this because manufacturers often have different needs than the other customers and we need to consider those. The second step, the what, this is the far left side of the house of quality. We're defining what are the needs and wants of each of our customers. Let's take a look at this in the template. Since you've already performed needs research, you should know uh, a list of the important needs and wants that your customers have. So you just want to enter that here in the what column, the customer requirements or customer needs and wants. And remember, as you're writing these down, it's not just the needs and wants of your primary customer, but all of them. So for example, we added manufacturers. Uh, manufacturers might have a few additional requirements like uh, easy to, to manufacture or easy to produce. Um, and each one of your customers might have slightly different requirements. So make sure you're including all of them on this list. The key here as well is these are statements or observations about your customers. Statements they've made or things that you know that they need based on observing them. Step three, who versus what, is about identifying how important each of the needs and wants are for the various customers that we've identified. Let's look at the, the template. One of the more, more useful voice of the customer aspects of the QFD process is that we uh, show relative importance of the different requirements for each of our customers. And then uh, the template that we're using here is um, going to use those relative importance to give us a weighting for the requirements, how relative importance overall for all of our customers. So I'm going to fill in some numbers for relative importance, things like clean water. Well, it's a water filter, so cleaning water should be very important to most of our customers. Um, looking nice might not be important to all of them, but perhaps it is to some more so than others. Um, easy to make, well, that's going to be important for our manufacturer, but not so much for the people buying it. They just want it to work once they get it. And then um, there are some variations in here. You want to think carefully about this. So, for example, I have uh, backpackers at uh, eight for lightweight because that's very important if you're carrying it for an extended period. But for scouts, that's only a three for lightweight and portable because a lot of scouting trips are going to be um, drive up camping. So think about these things as you put in these numbers. 
So the now, step four, is the right-hand side of the house of quality. And here we're looking at uh, existing products that partially meet the customer's needs and wants and how well they do in each of those criteria. Let's take a quick look at some existing products. So in the field of water filtration, we have a lot of different options for producing uh, clean water for drinking. Uh, you have the option of basically just carrying a lot of water. That doesn't work quite so well for a backpacker out for multi-days, but it's great for perhaps a, a day hiker. You've got iodine tablets you can add or other types of uh, chemical water treatment. You've got simple filters that are inline filters. You've got pump type filters. Uh, you've got ultraviolet light, and then we've got the old standard of boiling water. These are all kinds of options. Let's choose a few of these and put them into the template. So we're going to type in some key customers here, and I'm just going to show a few generic things. So for example, what about a, a camelback sort of process? So a flexible bladder with a tube and a basic water filter and uh, some sort of chemical treatment and uh, boiling water, just to give us some alternatives. Now, the important thing to note with this is these are products that fill some, but not all, of the needs and wants, or partially fill needs and wants. This is not an attempt to um, set up a decision matrix to choose the best product. What we're looking for is products that shine in particular areas. So some of these might be excellent at cleaning water, but absolutely horrible at tasting good, for example. Um, others might um, be very easy to clean, but they don't clean the water at all. So you want to have a variety of products in here and then do some assessment based on your benchmarking of how they do. And some of this is very much a judgment call. For instance, uh, boiling water, how, um, how much does that look nice? Well, if you like to stare at a fire, then it might look very nice. On the other hand, um, it's, uh, it's not really a product, so you have to apply some judgment on things like this. The goal here is to identify which products work particularly well for which of the needs so that you can learn from them. Step five, this is the top floor of the House of Quality. We are looking at um, how you might be able to assess how well that you've met the customer needs. So these are measurable uh, criteria that we can use to assess our design. Some sort of test is what you want to be thinking about. Let's take a look at the template. So the specifications are getting into the output of what we want from the QFD. These are the things that you anticipate you could do to evaluate each of the customer needs and wants. So some of this might come from research, this might be driven by um, specs that industry uses, or it might be your best guess at how you might evaluate each of these. You want to stick to things that can be measured numerically. In some cases, that's going to force you to have some sort of survey structure or get a uh, customer group to try things. So for example here, if it's going to look nice, the best way to measure that is probably to get a group of people and have them rate it. Something else useful at this stage is to assess whether each of these specifications is heading towards a target value or if you want to maximize or minimize it. And that's where the direction of improvement row in the template is helpful. An up arrow, down arrow, or a circle for a target. So go ahead and identify those for your engineering specifications now. Step six, the what versus how, is identifying the, uh, ne comparing the needs and wants to the identified tests that we'll perform. Basically, we want to make sure that we have, for every need and want our customer has, we have some way of assessing whether we've met it. And that's what this central section tells us on the House of Quality. Let's take a look at the template. So when you are assessing your, um, your how versus what, what you're really doing is determining how well your identified test procedures will match up with the wants and needs that you've identified. So you want to use these symbols here. Uh, the solid circle is a high correspondence, the hollow circle is a moderate, and the uh, triangle is a, um, a low correspondence, and blank means there's no interaction. So you just work through what I recommend is going across by customer want. Each of the tests you've identified, will they in any way assess whether you're meeting that customer want? And this is just a process you go through as a team to make sure you've captured all of the important items um, in the customer needs and wants list. 
Now, in this process, you might identify a few things that are problematic. For instance, perhaps you've got a need or want that you didn't come up with any test for. Well, go ahead and add a test, or at least add a placeholder that identifies some more work you'll have to do later on. Um, in addition, you might identify a test that's not strongly correlated to one of your needs or wants. Maybe that's a test you can get rid of. I sort of highlight those along the process. So do this together as a team. Think carefully about whether you've captured all your customer needs in, for, in the form of testing. Step seven, how much is really the meat of the house of quality? Everything else was preamble. Now we're gonna use what we get out of the house, house of quality to inform the, the target values that we're setting for each of our tests, how well it needs to perform. This is the thing that takes the longest time in industry because it actually requires going out and doing testing on existing products as opposed to guesswork kind of that we've done already. So we're going to just um, go rather quickly through this, doing our best guess at how these products might perform if we ran the test. If you have sufficient time, you actually want to run those tests. On to the template. So move on down to the bottom of your house of quality, sometimes called the basement. You'll see your current products are copied down there. And what we're trying to do now is not assess them relative to the customer needs and wants, but the hows or the engineering specifications. Ideally, you would run tests and actually have test results you're using to rank these. Um, in lieu of that, do your uh, best guess, apply your best judgment to each of these and assess as good as you can. And then based on where the existing products stand, you can set your targets. You usually want to meet or exceed the targets for each of your competitive products in each of the critical tests. So that's how we set the targets based on these test results that we're recording down here. And the last section of the House of Quality to fill in is the attic. In the attic, we are looking at the relationship between the engineering specifications. Specifically, um, if we improve on one specification, so one test result, are we likely to get an improvement on another or does it go the opposite way? This helps us identify when we have uh, specifications that are fighting against each other or perhaps working together. In addition, it uh, allows us to see if maybe we have too many specifications. Maybe we can get rid of a couple of these because they actually assess the same things. So head on up into the attic of your house of quality and here what we're going to do is assess the relationship between these tests that you're planning on running. And um, a lot of cases there's not a direct relationship, but again, you're using your engineering judgment. So a couple of quick examples. To make something durable for a drop height, usually you're going to um, be adding some weight to it or uh, increasing the cost. Um, on the other hand, perhaps adding weight will reduce its ability to resist a drop height. So you need to make decisions. What do you think is the, the most appropriate uh, relationship to put in here? And this is just to help you identify where you might have conflicts between tests that you're going to run or where those tests might work together. Okay, congratulations. You have completed a house of quality and abbreviated quality function deployment process. Now let's get some engineering specifications out of that. There are a few things you want to specifically look for in your house of quality. Do you have any specifications you identified across the top that don't relate strongly to customer needs and wants? If you do, perhaps you don't need to run those tests and you can save some money and time that way. Do you have any needs and wants that you haven't captured in, engineer, in an engineering specification? Perhaps then you need additional specifications. And of course, through this whole process, you probably came up with some really good new ideas for your design. Great, capture those ideas, but just try not to get fixated on any one of them yet. A couple more things you can get out of the QFD House of Quality. If you see a specification that is actually assessing several different customer needs, then you know that's a really important one and you need to pay attention to it. Um, are you, have you identified a need for a specification but you're not really sure how to test it? Well, that tells you to get started on that now. How could you evaluate that uh, customer need? And then it also encourages you to do some benchmarking. Perhaps you've done some initial estimates on your first time through the House of Quality, but you don't know enough. See if you can get access to those products and do some testing with them. And now we want to take the specifications, so that's the how uh, on the top floor com um, combined with the how much down in the basement to create your um, specifications table, and that will lead to your design verification plan. 
So you want to create a t table that looks like this to add to your design report. Um, list your specifications, give them a number, have a brief description of what it is, and then a target value. That's So the specification description is the how, and the target value is the how much from the House of Quality. And then you add some additional information. What is the tolerance on the number you have listed there? Do you need a, Is it a target specific or is it a min max, uh, min or max, sorry. Um, and then what is the risk that you anticipate of meeting that? In other words, how difficult it will it be to meet that target value? And then lastly, how are you going to assess that in your design? Are you going to analyze it? Are you going to test it? Are you going to um, compare it to similar products? Or are you simply going to inspect it, like measure something? Now, in addition to this table, you also want to briefly describe each of those specifications. So I recommend a numbered list, so one bullet point or number bullet number in the list for each of those specifications and explain how you anticipate testing for it. Not a test procedure, just briefly, here's what we're going to be doing to evaluate that spec. Once you have this complete, you have gone fully through the quality function deployment process and you now have some great engineering specs to move forward with your design in.